There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. And of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And this is actually my only second, actually third on location live oh, wow. podcast. The amazing Josh Kettner. Josh, what's going on, brother? Oh, not much, man. Just living here in paradise, you know? Loving it. <laughs> this man is, folks, living in paradise. So I'm actually at his clinic, which is in uh, Novo Varta. Is that my pronunciation? Nuevo Varta. Nuevo Varta. Nuevo Varta. Nuevo Varta. Part of Puerto Varta. It's right. kind of like a which suburb of it. Yeah. Nayarit. Right? Yes. Very nice. Yes, I pronounced that correctly. So Monica and I actually came down here. Uh, about six days ago and Josh and I have been talking actually for about three years but uh, he reached out to me on IG about three months ago and was like hey man you guys should come down and we'll talk shop and so here we are and uh, we actually went to dinner on Wednesday night at one of the top steakhouses in here so I know her at Prime and uh, Monica and I came in today for some treatments and uh, you know on this podcast we're going to go deep on a lot of things. Josh is definitely, (laughs) as I say, one of us, one of the children of the light. So nothing is off limits in this conversation. Uh, We definitely have to watch the YouTube and the AI (laughs) AI sensors and some of the things we say, but uh, but we're definitely going to talk shop about his clinic here today. Uh, A lot of different topics go deep on like stem cells, anti-aging, where the marketplace is going. Let me just kind of ask you, um, you know, obviously you're an American citizen. You've been living down here in, in, in Mexico now for 14 years, correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, maybe give them a little bit of your backstory, like how you got into this. You know, I know your situation with your dad, but for the people that don't know. And by the way, for all of you guys, uh, his clinic is dreambody.clinic. We're going to talk a lot more about the services and the stuff that he offers. But, like, he's one of the only places I know of in the world like you could pretty much fly in, whether you're a man or woman in any country, uh, you could fly into Mexico and basically be given a regimen for up to a year, correct? Well, it's, yeah, so we, that's how we started, I guess. Let's yeah. just start there. It's yeah. health, all of that. So we started with things like human growth hormone, testosterone, sure. which you literally wrote the book on, <laughs> and, right. uh, and, and hormone replacement therapy. But you can do this with almost any medication as long as it's not like really, you know, higher level restricted and whatnot. Because what happens is that the U.S. law is that you can seek medical treatment abroad and return home with up to 50 dose units of medication. A lot of diabetics do is to go to Canada to sure. get cheaper insulin, right? Not a not a big thing, but it turns out Mexico is a, a better option for hormones because they're pretty much not regulated here. Right. They're just you know right. pharmaceutical and all that. They're regulated in that sense, but they're not like they're not scheduled like the way they are in the U.S. Right. So you're able to fly down, load up anywhere else in the world. You're looking like a 90 day supply. Well, the U.S. 50 dose units. It doesn't specify what a dose unit is. Right. <laughs> so, right. You know, right. you consulted with lawyers, did all that, and you had to find out where is that limit of like intent to distribute sure. versus personal use. And we came up with for growth hormone 720 IU, which is enough to do two IU a day for up to a year. year. And that's kind of for the majority of people. That is the perfect anti. That's that's the only look. Uh, in my article that I wrote last year, you know, I deeply researched this, and you and I both know, and we're going to talk about that mm-hmm. in the show. But growth hormone is, gets a really bad rap. You know, there's a lot of bullshit uh, in the marketplace, even supported by you know, I would say, big pharma, the FDA, whatever you want to call it, where you know it shuts down the pituitary, and you know, <laughs> your body stops making it, and you know, all these people. I know you know this, Josh. You know, I'm sure yeah. you have. Know, you know, thousands of patients that have come in over the years who say, oh, you know, I'm really afraid if I use it, it's going to shut down my body. And I, you know, as a user myself and personally tested myself for four times, you know, IGF-1 and all the other biomarkers, I've never had a variation when I was on it or when I was off of it, right? Yeah. And, and, and obviously I'm using the same stuff that you guys have here, genotrope and nortrope and 
uh, the best growth hormone in the world, like what I call it, the genotrope and the nectar of the gods, right? Yeah, look, I got some yep. right here. He's got them right there yeah. in the background. Some old ones. Well, so it's funny, right? Now, like, this is an old one. Well, I mean, this is very close to what it still looks like. But the thing oh, no, is, these are new. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Them. Well, so the thing is, is that people, as you know, uh, like to think that growth hormone is counterfeited, and it is. Yeah. But when you're a trained eye and you've been working with the real stuff, you know when it's in a pen and it's oh, fake. Oh, for sure. It's not fake. For sure. Right. And I and I know that there's a lot of people out there because I've had people you know message me and send me emails and stuff like that uh, on social media and you know various followers and stuff like that and say, but bro, how do you know? And I'm like, well, when you see a Pfizer pen <laughs> or a Nordisk pen, yeah, this isn't scratching exactly, off. That's exactly. A good way to know. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody is counterfeiting this, okay? It's just, it's, it's, it's not possible, it's far, it's, especially with the money, as you know, that goes into making you can You can get these out of Alibaba at the same yeah. time. You can fill them up, but right. like, it's it's just knowing the marketplace. Exactly. Know where right. it's legal, know where it's not a big right. deal, all of that, and you can figure it out. It's pretty simple, so, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, back to your story, though. Uh, who, who doesn't want to come down to an exotic, you know, beach destination, like, this amazing, you know, area. I mean, like I said, you know, Monica and I are staying here at the, in, in essentially uh, Puerto Vallarta now uh, till Sunday, and then we go to Punta Mita for the next week, which is like, you know, even better. But I mean, like, you're know, within, go. yeah, exactly. But I you're am. within twenty to thirty minutes of that, you know, where your where your location is. So it's like, why would somebody not want to come in, make this a destination vacation, and then while they're here, you know, come over to your clinic for stem cells, for hormone optimization? I mean, there's other stuff. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it, it makes no sense. I mean, it doesn't not make sense to do that versus you know going somewhere else. But uh, so so back to your story. How did you get into this? What was the you know the the yeah. onus or the initiative that allowed you to create Green Body? Yeah. So growth hormone was it, but it was because my dad was sick. Right. My dad got Lou Gehrig's disease. He had this. He had just gotten. He'd started a few years earlier. A big aerospace company it was growing like crazy. He was like literally a rocket scientist. Right. I mean, it worked for Lockheed in the past and different Mars mission stuff, all that, like crazy, crazy right. missiles, rockets, all that. And unfortunately, he got ALS, and it's like, what do you do? There's nothing right. for it. Right. It'll make you like a guinea pig in these studies where you don't even know what you're getting or if you're even getting the meds. Right. It's crazy. And he came up with, and this is like set 18 years ago when he was diagnosed, so the internet wasn't what it is today. No. We kind of figured out, hey, you know, if you have HIV muscle wasting, right. like your insurance will cover it and they will throw growth hormone and testosterone. testosterone and, and DECA probably. Yeah, because yeah, how many, I mean, this is where most bodybuilders used right. to get it. They'd find That's some right. guy with HIV, buy serostim off of him, you know, I mean, it was, it was messed up, but like, it's just, and that you still hear those stories yeah. from people. And the insurance will cover it at like bodybuilder type doses because growth hormone helps you retain muscle. Right. Right. People get it confused. Bodybuilders abuse it with the insulin. And exactly. they, they, if you do that, if you go over six IU, you're gonna get type two diabetes. All the negative things that might You have to inject right. insulin with it. But at lower doses, man, it is so anti aging it's profound. It's incredible. So we're thinking, okay, sick, muscle wasting disease. Well, let's go after what, you know, can help with that. Well, in Seattle, where I'm from back then, the Anabolic Steroid Act classified this under that, even right, though exactly. this isn't steroids. It has exactly. nothing to do with it. Right. Like, it's anabolic in the sense that, yes, you will build muscles easier, but it's not an anabolic steroid right. at all. Right. It's a peptide. But then also, testosterone, very tough to get there, is like, I mean, Let's be honest, you know, like most guys over 30 should probably be yeah. on TRT. 25 <laughs> today, it, it's so bad. It keeps, yeah, the so age it keeps going be. down. Yeah. Yeah. And so they wouldn't give them those things. So I looked into it, couldn't figure it out back then. And I actually got into like senior care. I was helping my dad. I was like, hey, I like helping people that are sure. sick, right? Sure. So I kind of flowed into senior care, read an article. It's like, man, outsources parents to India. Like, that's genius, you know? <laughs> Get rid around the regulation sure. that kills that industry, makes yeah. it expensive. And I was like, that's too far away, but I wonder if Mexico would work. Very similar. My parents always took us to Mazatlan every year, so, you know, we were pretty used to that. So I was like, hey, let's check it out. Had a friend who lived here in Puerto Vallarta, came down to check it out, ended up having some investors just fell through over time and I met a doctor who'd been doing the same flying by program since the early 90s and he was an American doctor working down here because he had dual citizenship and he went back for a PhD program me and my wife took over 
and it just kept growing. And then you hear rumors about stem cells. That was a little over six years ago. We finally tracked that down, built a relationship, invested in the lab, and we're in the process of building the largest clinic with stem cell lab in the world right now. Yeah, and so, I'm gonna get some uh, pictures yeah. pictures from you on that so we can put that in the podcast when we edit this in. And that's all awesome. And you guys, you know, for you guys, the audience, the listeners, uh, you know, all over the world that'll be watching this, um, Josh is amazing. His wife, Venus, I hope she can pop in here for a second. We can just say hi to her. She's also amazing. We went to dinner with them on Wednesday night. And like I said, Josh and I have been talking back and forth. And I've, you know, I've been watching your podcast and, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've done, um, it's really groundbreaking, right? Like you were really one of the first people I want to give you credit, you know, to come out talking about this, you know, cause like I said, as you know, and, and, and we're, we live in still in a world where most people don't want to admit things, right? They don't yes. want to be transparent. They don't want to be authentic. You and I are cut from the same cloth. We're extremely authentic, extremely temp- tra- transparent. We say it like it is, uh, you know, and obviously I just met you, you know, three days ago, but, um, from talking to you, I knew that there was a lot of similarities and now obviously like, you know, we've been walking a very similar path. You're a little bit younger than I am, but uh, it's all very fascinating. And I'm just honestly very grateful that we now, let, let's be honest, like COVID gave you and me and obviously your business, but the opportunity to talk about these things in a much more, I would say unifying way, because now people are afraid of this shit. You know, they're not going to be like, oh dude, you know, that shit's going to shut your pituitary down and <laughs> you're going to get cancer and all that. I mean, it's very open that, you know, again, my article, if you guys haven't read it and I know most of you guys will be, but if you haven't, I'll link to the article, you know, it's 9,000 words. It's all the studies. This is not anything, but as you said, incredibly profound to help you slow your aging process. Now, again, all things being equal, you know, you eat right, you're exercising, you're doing all the things that we recommend to be optimized, low inflammation. But, you know, if you're doing all of those things and you're using this, you are absolutely resisting aging. I mean, you know, Monica and I look on our Facebook, you know, we have some pictures from this week. I mean, you can't look better than we are. We're in our fifties, you know? So, I mean, there's, you know, there's no doubt that coming down to this clinic, you know, if you're somebody who is unable to locate, you know, the things that they offer down here, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, this is where you want to come. Okay. So let's just kind of talk about, um, before we get into stem cells, let's talk about the climate of coming into Mexico, flying into yeah. Puerto Vallarta airport, uh, again, from anywhere in the world. Like, what is your process like as far as like when you guys see patients and stuff like that? picking people up, shoving them around. How does yeah. it work? We've got a whole team of drivers that pick people up at the airport, take them to their hotel, all the clinic transportation, everything. And, you know, I've lived here 14 years. I've never seen, like, a violent crime, no, anything bad. It's not what you're being told by the no. media. And it's tough for people to believe that. So we provide the transportation because we don't want people to, you know, they just, that, that's a big concern for them. Oh, yeah. am I going to go there? I'm going to get robbed. Like, I yeah. guarantee you any major city in the United States is a million times scarier than anywhere in Mexico other than like Juarez. <laughs> and, 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 and let me just echo this and you know, for the guys that watch the show uh, that know me personally, uh, and I know there's a bunch of you now, um, I've traveled to Mexico, Josh, more than 50 times since 2005, and I've never in my life ever once felt threatened, intimidated, or even like I was in a place that was like sketch where I was like, whoa. and I. My ex-wife had a a histamine reaction here. You know, she had Mm -hmm. went into histological shock because she ate like some sort of crazy thing Uh, in uh, in uh, ceviche, and yeah, we didn't know. And you know, sometimes people don't know they have like these allergies to specific specific types of seafood. But like, I was in like, uh, dude, I was in the bowels of outside of Cabo, you know, (laughs) clinic, you know, having her with saline and hydrocortisone and all that, and, and just dealing with that. And even then, I never was once felt like I was in a bad place or worried or anything like that. So I totally echo that. Mexico is safe. It's one of the, it's probably the most open country now since the whole, you know, scamdemic of the last two years. You know, the government here is like very anti that. They're not anything like the militant aspects of the USA or Europe, the Europe, the European zone. So it's a very, very easy place to fly. 
Uh, and as you know, um, you know, a lot of people from Southern California now just cross the border at CBX and fly from Tijuana to anywhere they want in Mexico. And it's like yeah. two or three times cheaper than flying from the States. Yeah, and you just walk across a bridge. It's Literally the easiest thing. Walk and across Tijuana, I went, I've never been there before, even living in Mexico. I've lived in Southern California. Yep. We went earlier this year, and I was like telling my wife, I'm like, this is like a cleaner, nicer yes, version of San Diego. Dude, I'm not, well, I'm not kidding you. Like, the airport in Tijuana is nicer than LAX. There's absolutely no doubt and they just renovated the whole thing so it's like brand new all the streets are brand new paved we drove down to Ensenada I was like wow this is this is actually not what I was expecting yeah no everything is a myth everything is the opposite usually of like what you've been told so you know getting back to the clinic uh, it's beautiful by the way again Monica and I have been here all morning we've had some treatments which we'll talk about at some point but uh, let's talk a little bit about stem cells you know let, let me set the story up where you know, obviously five years ago, uh, the United States, the medical community, the allopathic business, you know, everybody that was in the quote unquote, uh, what I call the seminar hustle, uh, you know, that was the thing, right? Yeah, like they were talking about stem cells, you know, then it was exosomes and it was like, it was the big thing and everybody thought it was like the next round of like where it was going to go. And then regulations have changed, you know, maybe share with what has happened um, in the USA and really the rest of the world and what separates Mexico from okay so the main thing we're talking more about the stem cells and the big difference would be that here we can culture the cells that's the main thing the United States has set it up where they're even now trying to get rid of these clinics where they're exactly. taking your fat your bone marrow or exosomes and they, even those are trying to shut down and the way to compare it is this Dr. Arnold Kaplan the man that named the senchymal stem cells uh, professor at Case Western University, as American as he can get. I've been to conferences with them. He's advised our lab, all of that, and basically just puts it like this. When you do the fat derived or bone marrow derived, it's like buying a, a apple juice from Coca-Cola. Right. He goes, you read the label, the back, sa it says all natural, and then you read the back and it's 1% apple juice, 99% sugar and water. It's the same thing. When they do that, they, I, they, put the tissue in a centrifuge, they put it with some, uh, with some collagenase to separate any like, you know, tissue and you get a liquid and that's what they inject back into you. And less than 1% of that is mesenchymal stem cells. Wow. So if you do get results, you don't even know why. And that's his big point is like, you can't say it was the stem cells. It could have been a different type of cell that was there in that fat or in that, that tip, that bone marrow and bone marrow is the worst source because stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells are parasites. They live on your capillaries, right? They come off, they go to the area of inflammation, not a lot in the bone marrow. And then you got exosomes, which was a genius workaround. So you know, I think it was Chimera Labs figured yeah, out. Yeah, Chimera Labs. Right? I actually met that guy, the guy that found it. And they're Labs. awesome. I, I think what they did so genius, but they're trying to shut that down now too. But the problem with that, if you talk to any of these like PhD, like biologists and such, is stem cells naturally release exosomes, right? So it's awesome, but they know where to release them. Right. Think of them as like there's a, over a thousand different types. Some cause inflammation, some mark inflammation. So there's a ton of different things that they do. They don't know what any of them do at this point. They cannot distinguish this one does this or that. And the, they can't just put, you can't just culture these stem cells, force them to release exosomes. You filter out the stem cells, which is a genius part because right. now, you're not administering cultured stem cells, so it's legal, yeah. but you have to filter those exosomes down. And the way that the, the professor of cellular biology at University of Guadalajara explained to me, like imagine taking a sip with a bunch of rocks and dirt and you're just keeping the rocks. Right. So you're only keeping the large exosomes, which can be beneficial. There's, right. a, there's some incredible results they've seen, but it's not as specific and it's a, it's a crapshoot. It could work, it might not, where Dr. Kaplan's argument to this is you're better just to do more mesenchymal stem cells. Like, why mess with it? But because you can't, hey, you gotta do what you can. Like, I'm not trying to trash exosomes. They're a vital part of mesenchymal stem cells. Right. It's just that the, the MSCs release them. That will be the future of medicine. Sure. Probably Dr. Diego Correa, who's the underling of uh, Dr. Kaplan, is studying that intensively because if he can isolate That's a single want to go. exosome, yeah. then he can patent it and that's the problem. Everything is bad. Well, then they can make their money back because who's going to invest to get mesenchymal right. stem cells passed 
when it's two and a half million dollars for a new medicine application, then hundreds of millions to get it through all four stage trials of the FDA. And you can't patent it and control it. You will not get your money back. You're just letting everyone else do it. Who's gonna put the money up? Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Well, well so it kind of segues to that though. So before I want to get in, and as I told you, you know, one of my uh, expert uh, stem cell docs, you know, wants me to ask you these questions because he thinks it's going to be great for the world to understand this. And I know you're going to answer them, but, uh, why did the FDA slash medicine slash, you know, the allopathic uh, brotherhood crack down so much? Like, what is it? Is it because they can't patent it? Is it because this is a threat to sick care? I mean, what is the real reason? I think both. Yeah. I think, look, they could make it this simple. I was at a, I was spoke at Freedom Fest on the weekend. Right. And there's a really cool guy, uh, Mac Davis, is doing it. It's, uh, it's a temporary gene therapy thing. And he goes, look. He goes, you know how they should solve it is right now, I mean, this is how absurd it is. Like they have a medical device classification. They literally tried to make the cup you pee into classified as a medical device so they could control it. And like, I mean, that's how insane they take this. And then you have like medicines. Well, what about the things that you naturally produce? Right, right exactly. Hormone, peptides, right. like, you know, all these different things that like, they should not be classified as no, a medicine if they're no. bioidentical. They should right. have its own category and they could solve it. But look, now they have perfect deniability. You right. talk to any of these guys at the FDA, oh, well, we're trying, we just need more studies, more studies, but that's not how their system works. Right. There's over 100,000 studies on Google Scholar from the sentinel stem cells. Right. Like, at right. what point is it deemed safe when you have that many safe studies? So. Yeah, it's their sick care model because they want you as a subscription model, I believe. They've seen what software development there's a few. Exactly. And they're like, oh, hey, we can get a monthly fee from you. Let's put you on a statin. They keep lowering the cholesterol levels. Like, it's unbelievable. The cholesterol's a problem. Like, come yeah. on. Like, yeah. And then, uh, and then they, they, got, they gatekeep it by saying that. Like, it's, it, you got to go through our whole billion dollar phase trial and, Oh, and yeah, you probably won't get your money back because everyone else can do it now. True, true or false, and I know your answer, but I think it, it's good for to talk about this. You know, I have a really good uh, brain surgeon one time tell me, he's like, Jay, if metformin was in the water supply in America, most of the hospitals would shut down, you know, and there's a lot of truth to that. But like, <laughs> I, I want to kind of get your opinion and you're, you're the guy to give it. But, you know, if a person is, you know, again, like us, and, and when I say like us, like, you know, we eat right, we actually exercise, you know, it's important for us to actually, you know, not go into the metaverse every day, right? Like, if you were able to just say, take a 35 year old, and maybe it's even 30, maybe it starts at 30 now, but let's just say between 30 and 35, optimize their hormones, give them a precise surgical dose of growth hormone, and then treat them with stem cells, would there ever be a need for any medications under it targets inflammation and right. that's the root cause of almost every disease you Literally. can think of. So Literally. it's, if you stop that, like, I mean, just things as simple as PRP, why right. does every doctor not have a right. centrifuge? Right. I mean, people I've seen locally have like dislocated thumb or yeah. something and they're like, right. oh, I'm going to need stem cells. I go, no, right. let's just take some blood and let's put some PRP in there because if you get it before the fibrosis sets in, right. and this is why stem mesenchymal stem cells work so well. Once you hit bone maturity, 18 for women, 21 for men, you lose 90% of your capillaries, right? right. That's, nine, that's where your stem cells live, mesenchymal stem cells. So now you get injured, white blood cells rush to the area, they create fibrosis. It blocks the healing. Right. Like you can have all the growth hormone, all the IGF-1 you want, but if you can't get rid of that scar tissue, right. you're not going to heal the problem. So yeah, if they just did those things, you're, you're being preventative so those things can't happen. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, but hey, there's no money in that. Then we might have to like be healthy and not, you know, control. I mean, why do you think they don't want men having testosterone? Yeah. Thinking free, thinking for right. themselves. Strategical, <laughs> tactical. I know, it's so unbelievable. Like I'm actually about to write an email for my email list because like in one of my private groups I had a guy blow up on me and he's not optimized and he's very open and admitted about it. 
And I said, look, dude, like, I, I literally told him, I'm like, you are reacting in the way that you're doing because your testosterone level is not optimized and your hormones altogether are not balanced. And, you know, I figured he would be like, F you and I'm out, blah, blah, blah. And he literally <laughs> wrote me a really pleasant email the next day or message in the group. And he said, you know what, dude, I slept on it and you're right. I'm not at the right vibration. I'm angry all the time. I'm in balance. I'm moody. Yeah. It really is my hormones. I'm like, bro, I've seen this a thousand times. As you know, the media lies to men and they tell that men, they tell men that, you know, people that use hormones become roid ragers and unbalance it, it, as you know everything is the inverse of the truth right so it's like when you're optimized you become tactical you become very precise you become logical uh you're completely calm you're completely centered you're, you, you you don't react you know out of control it, it really is of yourself exactly man i mean it's i, I mean you're right we're, we're preaching to the choir i know a lot of my audience <laughs> yeah. understands this but so so let me just let me, Let's put it in perspective, though, and we'll get back to this, too, before this, this episode ends. But at what point would you recommend, and again, uh, Josh has a lot of celebrity clients, guys. There's a lot of very, you know, VIP-type people. And we're not saying that to brag. We're just saying that, that, you know, a lot of people, as you know, and have explained to me, and again, I get it, you know, are in positions where... They have to do everything legit, right? Like they can't even like risk going to a doctor in America and getting a script written because somebody might do a background check on them and boom, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of people coming down here from you know, various places in the world. Everything is like totally legit and copacetic. But at what point, and maybe just kind of give out like a, a, a scenario, like for someone like that who's watching this show, and I know there's a lot of you guys that do watch the show, and again, thank you for watching. Um, what would you have them start coming down here? And would it be, you know, in my estimation, an annual visit to see you? Hey, who's going to want to come to Puerto Vallarta <laughs> for a one week out of yeah, a year, yeah. right? Well, I think that's what I messaged you back about yeah. a few months ago. I was yeah. like, I really think like the, the potential of things like mesenchymal stem cells for performance enhancement just haven't been chart. tapped into. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you really can see big difference with yeah. that and they can't test for it, they can't go into it, they can't regulate you. I mean, say, it's like growth hormone. Right. I think the NFL says they test for it. It's out of your out. system in sure. 12 hours. There's, if you inject at night, sure. you can't test for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, a couple guys maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless you're yeah. abusing it. Like, right. I mean, like, it's right. just nuts. Right. So I, I found personally, I did an IV of 300 million was my first IV. I'm patient number one for everything. Like, That's awesome. Do not offer things I don't do myself. And I did a 300 million IV. I think I was like at 215 pounds at the time. And I put on about 10 pounds of muscle that year. It was the worst year of my life working out. I was not, you know, Stress, I was building the business. Yeah, oh, we were right. just in the yeah. throes of everything. Yeah. I was yeah. still on growth. I've been on that for nine years. Yep. Test for about nine years. Yep. And Are you taking two IUs Monday through Saturday? Just 1.8. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not yeah. like me, 1.2. Yes. Yeah, so and I've used two. Yeah. I go from like 1.2 to 2. Yeah, if I'm really hitting the gym hard, I might go But are you going all seven, seven days or you take one day off a week? No, I do seven days a week. Okay. It's, uh, I haven't seen, like you said, I, I've been There's testing no my blood work. Yeah. My resting IGF-1 is 150. Exactly. I'm 155. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I just think there's a lot of potential to it, even as a performance enhancement aspect. Like when we have the lab done, I'm gonna play around with like site injections because yeah. there's no way it doesn't make muscle heal faster. Right. right, play with that. I mean, I'm not trying to like promote that as hey, come down, but like it's exciting to see. Like I think I, I want to see the best athlete doing the of best course. things. Yeah, like I mean the they're gladiators. Yeah. yeah, I mean like if we're gonna pay all this money for <laughs> private seats and you know performance, I mean. I mean, look, we, we can do another podcast yeah. and talk about professional athletes and, and, and how they get around things and stuff like that. And, and, you know, you mentioned NFL. I mean, like, all the MMA guys, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're all using growth. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a whole other story. But um, so at what point, though, like, what age is it appropriate to, you know, start making an annual trip to Dream Body? Um, I mean, for stem cells, age doesn't matter. Yeah. We literally, like... Dr. For Rowe, autism and stuff yeah, like we that. do autistic kids that are as young as like three, seeing great results there, and we do patients up into their nineties. I mean, so so yeah. talk a little bit about autism because I actually have a very con a large contingent of people. So I one of my good friends is J.B. Hanley who wrote all the books on autism mm -hmm. and stuff from you know dealing with his son. He's a you know yeah. a financier. And what's up if you're watching this, JB? Shout outs to you and uh, your, your son Jamie. He's amazing. Um, like, how would you treat someone who has full blown 
and I know there's levels of autism, but like someone who's full blown, you know, spectrum, how do you guys treat them? Uh, we do a protocol that's pretty consistent. Obviously, weight and age matter, but you usually want to get kids between like three and seven is ideal. And we bring them in and we start by booking the operating room. And we've got a great anesthesiologist. We work with two of them. One puts the kid to sleep. The other, so we give them some midazole pants so they don't remember it. It's a little drink. You know, kind of get some little drunk dudes. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, get them on the, I think it's at the sephirin gas, I think is, I can't remember which gas, but put them to sleep. And then we go in intrathecally into the spinal fluid. And we're finding that's the biggest thing. There's no blood brain barrier to pass sure. or anything. Go straight up the cerebral spinal fluid to the brain. So Josh, I know that um, I told you that one of my docs, uh, shout out to Dr. Roy Buzzcourt uh, in Ohio. He wanted me to ask you these questions because he wanted us for the purposes of anybody. And you know, he was a big stem cell guy at one time. For sure. Uh, for the planet to truly understand this, because obviously this is a big enough uh, audience that you know we want people to get this. So his first question was for your for your mesenchymal. And how do you say it? You say it differently. Than I always say, say mesenchymal. That's mesenchymal or mesenchymal. They probably should be mesenchymal, but like Dr. Kaplan named them, and he says mesenchymal. So yeah, I like that pronunciation better. But I think I've heard so many doctors say mesenchymal. But anyway, yeah. it's the same thing. So this is question number one: Is it a single cell prep? And if so, is it cultured? And of cultured, how many times in generations do they culture? That's a great question. So I guess I'll just give the process, which will answer this. Is basically, yes, um, we culture the cells, which they're not allowed to do in the U.S. That's right. the big difference. That's how we can get these like tens of millions or even billions of cells right. so quick. Because the younger the tissue, the faster it replicates, right. right? So that's why we take it from placenta and umbilical cord tissue which is perfectly ethical. These are from live, healthy birth, C-section, and the women agree to donate it. So we only take from women between the ages of 18 and 25. They're given like a big questionnaire. They agreed to donate, um, you know, simple questions like age, how many sexual partners have you had? If they answer more than one, automatically disqualify. Oh. You know, have you had the COVID vaccine? If they answer yes, they're He's disqualified. Done. We don't want that. A big question we get and then people get confused they think we're just going through like so many of these no we only use one like maybe every four to six months so it's not a lot of donors and when you get this donor tissue it is so important that it is the freshest not damaged in the pregnancy tissue i mean we get hundreds of these and it's only one out of like maybe 500 gets selected because it has to come straight from the birthing room, straight to the lab, as fresh as possible for the healthiest cells possible. We then isolate the pure mesenchymal stem cells, and then we are able to take that, and that initial round is cryogenically frozen. So this is where people always ask about frozen sure, cells. Sure. We do not use frozen cells, but every lab in the world will cryogenically freeze that first round, right. because that's how we store them. And it's for purely preservation purposes, correct? Yeah, yeah, well, and that one's okay to do because this is how you know they're okay is because when we take them out to culture, let's say you take one square centimeter has, just for easy math, let's say a million, right? right? So then you're taking that, you know, hey, we need, you know, four million cells today. So we go one, we replicate it the first round, now we're at two, next round, now we're at four. Right. So we determine that we typically what we found is that once you get to the 12th round of replication you i mean these cells will keep replicating forever it's awesome but after the 12th round under the flow cytometry under the microscope you'll see that the cell starts getting more oblong it loses this nice kind of round shape right. that it should have right. so we only go lately we've really only been going up to like the third round based on patient load um, we find that anywhere between the third to sixth round produces the healthiest cells. Um, the thing is, the first round, and this is a problem with U.S. cells because a lot of them are frozen, like Utah Cord Labs. They use the whole umbilical cord, and they get yeah, around like 10 million cells from that. Or no, not whole, yeah, they use the Wharton jelly, and they have to then culture it, or not culture it, just isolate those cells, cryogenically freeze them, and ship them to the doctors they work with. Well, the thawing process can tend to kill the cells. Like I think it was Regenix did a study and they get kind of ridiculous with their stuff because you know they're so big and they kind of talk trash sometimes like I don't think they should, but they, they did a study that's on their site that shows 
they ordered those 10 million and there were only about 5 million living cells from it. So that's why we don't freeze them after the cultivation process. We, we put them in what's called sodium lactate, very similar to saline solution, and we administer them within 24 hours of the cultivation process. Now, they will survive at over 97% viability up to three days. After that, you start getting a steep drop off. They start dying off, all that. We do random like cell counter checks here where you can test viability, you can test cell count. And yeah, it's, uh, it's no problem. You're getting nice, health, fresh living cells. So you kind of answered it. Um, he's, you know, he wanted me to, and again, I'm asking this to the audience so that you can answer it so it's very, very clear and transparent because we're all about clear, transparency and authenticity, right? Um, so the amniotic membrane, umbilical cord, blood, umbilical cord tissue, are, are they coming from all of those, one of those, two of those? Three from of those? placenta and wart jelly. Okay. So we use both. I mean, they're, they're both part of the same, you know, thing when you're taken from the birth. So that's a big misconception, too. It is a marketing game. Right. That, like, right. fat-derived is better right. than bone marrow is better <laughs> than, the, like, like, Dr. Kaplan, all these scientists that are really studying this in the labs have found no significant difference between the different tissue types. They work the same way either way. We might find out in the future some express a few different markers. It might be a little bit better for something, but at this point, there's no scientific evidence that like one is better than the other. They're either, um, like Dr. Kaplan starts his conferences, a um, mesenchymal stem cell is a mesenchymal stem cell is a mesenchymal stem cell. Awesome. Two more, um, what, is the, what is the testing that you're doing on the cells? So we, st we start with flow cytometry from a third party lab and we provide a certificate of this because you need to make sure that the stem cells have certain markers exactly. or don't have certain markers to prove. So we go by the standards of the International Stem Cell Association, their guidelines, what they say if it has certain markers that is a mesenchymal stem cell. So we. We give a certificate that shows it expresses those on the right, either positive or negative, to prove it's a mesenchymal stem cell. We also give a viability report, a cell count report that shows viability and cell count live in dead cells. Because there are some places that get a little tricky. They're like, yeah, right. you're going to get, you know, 100 million cells, but they're not some telling you that, like, how many are dead. Right. Um, we usually see a very, very low ratio of dead to live. You'll see maybe like, you know, a hundred thousand dead for every couple million live that you have. So, and that's normal, correct? Yes. I mean, it's not avoidable. No, you. It's. I mean, no matter what, you're going to have some cells that die. It's just yeah. what happens. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just that's that's. <laughs> what, I mean, well, it's like. I mean, so I'll I'll segue this. So this is like when someone purchases a peptide, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you purchase a peptide, doesn't matter where it's coming from, whether it's from a compound pharmacy or it's coming from a research chemical company. There's a, there's a percentage of efficacy at, at initiation or origin of the peptide going into, you know, let's say the vial. And due to travel, due to, you know, light, due to sunlight, due to exposure, due to it sitting on a truck or a tarmac or whatever, it degrades, right? So you're going to have ultimately when it shows up, when it's manufactured that it shows up and it's initially injected into the patient, there's always going to be a degradation. Yeah. It's impossible to you know, yeah. Nick, Nick will say that like if you get a 98% peptide at efficacy and that's usually the highest you'll ever see it at a compound pharmacy, he's like three weeks later it could be 75 to 80% efficacy. Totally. Yeah, so there's, there, there's no avoiding that. Okay, so there's two more. Um, in your cryopreservation pr process, is anything else mixed with them? Um, no, they, there's... They don't have anything, right? So it's no. Dr. Romo, our head physician, is off camera, and he's worked <laughs> at the lab and everything. Doc so. is coming in a minute. Yeah, because uh, the big question there, I think, is a lot. Some places will use DMSO and such for the cryopreservation process, but that's more when you're going to refreeze right. expanded cells and ship them because you can get, like, a different temperature grade where they can stay frozen. It just keeps them better. It's just, for again, long-term viability. Yeah, and, I mean... Some we like DMSO, like we do a DMSO push. Nick our loves IPs, DMSO. So, yeah, we, Nick we will love talk it, to so. you about DMSO. All <laughs> Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides? Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash ten dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. 
Well, actually, I just did a podcast with Dr. Amanda Bulmer in Canada. She's like one of the biggest DMO, DMSO people in the world, right? So she's like, because I didn't want to talk to her about DMSO because I want to talk to her about other stuff. <laughs> but she was like, oh, I want to talk about it. Uh, can I go on again? Uh, so, okay, last question then. How many cells are being used? I think you've answered that like 100 times. It, it's on our crazy. website. Every yeah. treatment's different. Yeah. So, And I think one thing that I didn't mention in that was the certificate also shows like a mesenchymal stem cell can't carry a virus. It could carry a retrovirus, right. but even if like, like if you took a biopsy of me and let's pretend I had a, a retrovirus, which I don't, and there's still only a 5% chance that would actually infect a mesenchymal stem cell. So we screen the women, then we screen the tissue, then we screen the isolated cells, and that's the report you get, which is actually the third check. We check for mycoplasms, we check for uh, endotoxins, bacteria, like anything that could cause an infection or an issue. Because that was a big problem in the US. There's a really good podcast called Bad Batch that goes into Livion, which was basically like a Tijuana style lab in San Diego, which is funny because everyone's <laughs> probably was the same so thing. afraid <laughs> it was a Tijuana doctor. Yeah, and it was. They probably had a tunnel. And yeah, they, they were not the regulated, tunnel. but man, they made these Gucci looking commercials. Of like, course, it was, of and course. they started selling, and they really hurt a lot of people. And in fact, the doctor, I mean, the, the lawyer in Texas that sued them, I think he sued every single like stem cell major clinic in the United States wow. and one is our patient and we have a great testimonial from him where we fixed his bronchitis and he starts the interview actually in the same room like I sue stem cell companies for a living <laughs> and then he goes in to talk about how because of a mutual friend he still trusted us and I mean you talk about the pressure on us I mean <laughs> wow. if anyone was going to come after us right. it was him and yeah. he, he loves us so that's Super awesome cool. man well that's an amazing validation uh, for that okay so perfect so that, that answers really all the questions um I wanted to mention this because you know it's one of your points and talking points, and you know, and then I'm going to talk about the treatment that I had today, and also what Monica had today, just so you guys know, because we got to sell Dream Body Clinic. <laughs> There's value here. Um, so, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about just how whack, you know, the whole, I would say, common misperception or misinformation, disinformation it is that, that is out there with regarding growth hormone and cancer. Oh yeah, so growth. I mean, I love talking. So yeah, free. I think like all the hormones like get a bad rap. Oh, well, of course, cancer, yeah, testosterone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean everything. It, and all the studies coming out prove the exact opposite. It's the inverse. But let's think of growth hormone. I'll give you a great example. My mom, I finally convinced her to start Are taking you serious? growth hormones, bro. Well, wow, she's amazing. not taking it now because of this. She ended up. She had started, and it turned out that she had gone to the dermatologist two oh, weeks before Jesus. coming to us, and she had a mark here, mark on her shoulder. It was melanoma, right? So she'd already started the growth hormone. She didn't tell me any of this. Her blood work was perfect. Right. We did every test we could. Right. Because we always screened. But the melanomas sure. were just from her exposure to sunlight. And yeah. Living, she living, grew up in California. I mean, she, yeah, her yeah. whole life. So she goes back, tells me two weeks later after being on growth hormone for two weeks, she has melanoma. And I said, she starts freaking out. I heard this. I heard oh, yeah, hormone was, can oh, cause yeah. cancer. And I go, Mom, chill out. Like, just stop taking it. And she's like, really? That's it? I go, yeah, growth hormone converts into IGF-1, which is where all the bad press, any doctor will tell you, well, you'll eventually get cancer and increased IGF-1. You'll get a lot of tumors feed off of IGF-1. And you're like, you already have it in your system. And I mean, there's certain people like Tony Robbins has a little right. tumor. He has like bodybuilder levels exactly. of growth hormone. Dude exactly. hasn't died of cancer. Right. So I get my mom right. off it. She's all fine. So that's the thing is that growth hormone actually helps your cells replicate faster and more efficient, which is the opposite of cancer. 100%. You end up healthier. We've got patients in their 70s. One of them, a retired pediatrician. 76, the guy looks like he's 50, moves like he's 20. Right. He used to have a two or Jeep brain where he jump in the back like a kid. I had, it, he would have met, he's, he's my like uncle's partner and he's a retired pediatrician. He has no pituitary gland function. He's been on nortotropin since like, you know, the 90s. He, has to. He, he was on humotrope before that. Like, it's insane how young he looks and right. moves. Right. It's just, it's mind blowing when you get these guys who've been on it for decades and they just, got a 75 year old in Tacoma Washington who's 
just started doing jujitsu because he decided downhill mountain bike riding wasn't his thing after going over the handlebars and not dying like anyone else should have. That's I mean, literally amazing. It's insane what these people are doing at their ages because of growth hormone. It's yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm a huge proponent. I mean, I literally <laughs> just started using growth hormone myself and, of course, my wife a year ago. Uh, and, again, genotropin, and she uses, like, 0.75 I use, and I use, now I'm using, like, 1 to 1 1.2, but I've, I've gone up to 2, but I always take a couple days off. Yeah, I always, <laughs> I always take a couple days off. But in regards to cancer, you know, I'll show up on my leg up here right now. Like, I have a basal cell right here. I've had five basal cells removed. I get in the sun, you know. I'm a California, Southern California guy now. Like, I go to beaches and stuff like that it's always like I always say man the difference between a pill and a poison is always the dosage right exactly. like if you're in the sun without protection all the time then yes it's negative if you're injecting you know 10 I use in the morning and 10 I use at night like bodybuilders or performance enhancements or strength athletes then yeah there's a risk of you know metastatic tumor formation or exacerbation or whatever but again you take a surgically precise dose and you live a clean, quote unquote, Jay Campbell, fully optimized lifestyle, the risks far, far underweigh the rewards. I mean, it's sure. not even, there's no comparison. So there's one last point, and then I want to introduce some of your staff. Um, really just how bad healthcare has become a cult. <laughs> and I mean, you know, look, I, I say this on my podcast all the time. I mean, we have two people now, right? It's a bifurcated system. You have the people that say, but Jay, my co-payment is $40 and that's all I can afford. And so that's all I'm going to take. And then you have the people like us who are like, no bro, like fuck your copay. Like this is all about optimization. And those type of people don't work in insurance, right? Like we work cash pay because that's how the world works, right? He who has the gold makes the rules, right? So it's like, it, it, the, the truth is, is like, that's where we are now. And I, and I know all of your people that come down here believe that because they wouldn't be coming here if that wasn't the case. But, but kind of just talk about like where it's going to evolve, right? Because I mean, you and I have been talking about that off camera today. You know, currency's going away soon. You know, there's going to be this giant crypto convergence for everybody. I mean, it's like you're going to have to start thinking cash pay. But you know, just talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I think that that system clearly doesn't work. No. I mean, there's a sick, sick relationship between big pharma, insurance companies, and this whole just feeding off each thing. other. Yeah, yeah. and it, it has. it. To me, it feels like a cult. Like, they just, the high priest told you to do this. Right. So, I got this. let's read off a list of things. And I mean, the, the way they incentivize these doctors, yeah, they can't pay them anymore, but they take them on these vacations. These, like, the, the perks they get for being like the top statin pusher right. is ridiculous. I know. It's insane. Know. We went to a conference uh, a few years ago and this uh, stem cell doctor starts talking. He goes, how many people here are on a statin? All his hands go up. He goes, how many of you um, have ever read the side effects? <laughs> Not one hand goes Not up. One. He starts reading, he goes, what diseases does that sound like? He goes, that is Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Right. Right. And, he go, and he said, you know, we are giving this to people because what you can turn them into a subscription model every month. Exactly. It used to be three hundred was high cholesterol. Exactly now it's right. two hundred. What does cholesterol do? Well, all your hormones. <laughs> Dude, cholesterol is it's such a scam. I mean, yeah, it's the same thing, right, with testosterone and all that and stuff. But you're right. It is. It's, it's become a cult, and it's unfortunate because you know, like I always say, you can't disparage the docs because they got to make a living. They got mortgages and second houses and college tuitions and everything else. You know, so it's like they got to do what they got to do. But you're right. Like in the U.S. Like the pharmaceutical companies are always famous, you know, for hiring like really good looking women with, you know, bolt ons and short skirts and then sending them to the doctors. It's so true. You know, and literally saying, Hey doc, you know what, I need you to sign up for this one and sign up for this one. And then before you know it, that's the main that's the main prescription that the doc is writing. And it, and, it, and it just goes, you know, on and on and goes. I mean, it's obviously not just in medicine, it's, it's everywhere. But yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it, the look, industry. the system, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but the system has failed, and like I said, it's now just totally bifurcated. So you're either, and this is the way I look at it, and I think this is the best way to wrap this up, and then we'll introduce you guys, and we'll talk a little bit about my treatments. But um, you either are willing to spend, and again, this goes for any person, regardless of income level. I don't care if you're a blue collar worker making thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, or you're a you know executive making six figures. If you cannot afford to spend between $3,500 and $10,000 a year on your personalized health care, your priorities are wrong, right? Because you guys know, I mean, if you have a heart attack 
or you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in your 40s, that's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of your life. And guess what? Very oftentimes, depending on your insurance, you don't get any coverage. And, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, holy shit, you know? So it's like preventative is where it's at. Yes. And, and, and so people have to start thinking about like, well, no, I don't want that to happen to me. I'm going to pay the five grand or the 10 grand or whatever it's going to cost, you know, to come down to dream body, to get optimized, to get your stem cells looked at, to be on growth hormone, to be on testosterone, you know, to be on metformin. I mean, that's the way people have to start looking at this because again, the system is designed, as you said, to keep you on pills, you know, 20 of them by the time you're 60 color coded, you know, with, with plastic equipment that they sell you to make sure that you know what is what and what not to mix with what. I mean, it's insane, like the cottage industry that's grown up around pill taking and pill pushing. So d don't be that person. Don't be that guy or gal. You know, uh, focus on health optimization. Focus on the things that we're talking here today. So, um, well, and it's all fear based, it's right? All fear -based. The whole culture in the yeah. States is fear based, and you're afraid of the wrong things. You should be afraid of heart disease. Right. That's what's going to get you. So exactly. why not be preventative? Like right. we are taking people out of congestive heart failure with our stem cell treatments. Yeah. We are seeing people that are on growth hormone that are preventing a lot of these different diseases. It's it's again prevent. Be afraid of what's going to happen and getting that lump sum. Like you right. just said, don't right. get hit with the lump sum of like right. I've got this massive disease that I now got to pay for. It's right. like, Prevent it. Do the right things. And, and you know, just to share with you know my treatments today, um, you know, Monica got some stem cells, uh, PRP interface. Uh, I did a cocktail. You know, an anti. It's called an anti aging cocktail. Correct. Did a hundred million stem cell IV. A hundred million stem cell IV, and you know we can talk about that. And then I also got my PP shot, which <laughs> is amazing, and I, it's the first time I've ever done it. I've heard amazing things not just from him of course but from other people who have done it i mean i have guys you know that are friends of mine in my inner circle who literally swear by it they say they do it every 18 months they're like it's it's a it's a religion at 50 and older right it's that good so obviously i'm really excited uh, to talk about that but maybe just share what are the real benefits of the cocktail and then also uh, monica because again women you know and i have a ton of women in my audience now too so like mm -hmm. like what is the real benefit of doing it in the face yeah, so let's start with face areas. Think of it, we, we say the better than Botox facial. It's not in the regard you would think. Botox is instant, right? Right. You're going to tighten everything up, but at the end of the day, it's botulism. I was about to say, Botox is horrible. They're and starting you, to find out the, the nerve toxins and how bad they are over time. Yeah, yeah and you need good. more yeah. and more yeah, because good. it breaks, it, it, exactly. you're making the muscles weaker exactly. and weaker and weaker. And you know, the fillers are pretty good, but they only last so long. So what the stem cells do is even if you want to do those things, you can't, right? It's okay, but they are gonna help regenerate the collagen under the skin. So we use fibroblasts, we use mesenchymal stem cells and PRP. And the big part of aging in the face is fat loss, which is right. the only place you want fat. Yeah, exactly. And the stem cells actually help regenerate that fat and they help uh, with the collagen re reproduction. So we use what's called the Thermage first. Um, it's got a few different names, but it uses, is it, is it radio frequency? Yeah, it uses yeah. radio frequency under the skin and it, it heats it up. It feels really hot for a few seconds and it basically causes some collagen damage. Well, that it gets your body going to right, heal to it. it. But yeah. so now that's why we put the platelet-rich plasma in because those platelets are going to crack open. You got six different cytokines, six different growth factors, things like IGF-1, IGF-2, VEGF, others that help heal. But you got the stem cells there now to guide the healing. And stem cells, the best way to think of them, they are the manager on the construction site. They do not turn into anything else. In fact, they probably shouldn't be called stem cells. The guy who named them wishes he could call them messenger signaling cells. In the lab, we can turn them in all kinds of tissue. But in your body, they're just there. It's how you healed when you were a little kid. Right. So we're letting you do that. And then the fibroblasts can turn into skin cells. They can turn into collagen you know, those different tissues. So you're hitting it from every possible level you can. And it's not instant, but over the course of the next like three to nine months, you're just gonna see your skin, your skin looks better. It's tightening up, like you just, it's smoother. The lines start to reduce. We've actually had a lot of people get off of Botox by doing it because they can regenerate all that tissue and, and slowly wean themselves off. So. That's awesome. I think it's a big movement, by the way, for women to get off of Botox because again, botulism, like you said, it's a nerve toxin. And as you said, it weakens the cells, it weakens all of the structural proteins. 
I mean, it's it's a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, I'm so against it. You know, I told my wife, I'm like, you're never doing it again. <laughs> it's not worth it. So it's so awesome. I can't wait to see that. And then uh, just a cocktail, just maybe a little bit on that. Like, what is someone who's like me? And again, I know that, you know, everybody's not as healthy as me, you know, uh, but, but from a realistic standpoint, like, what is the cocktail going to do for someone who's 40 and up? Yeah, so we, we consider that just our anti-aging, like, preventative treatment, right? So we get a lot of people, it'll come like once a year, because those cells are gonna stick around for the next eight months to a year, and they're gonna go straight to your heart. Right. So again, like the big problem with the heart, and what I find so fascinating is when they first did these studies, they thought these stem cells were becoming cardiomyocytes, like right. heart tissue, because yeah. they were regenerating the heart. Right. We've had, I got a great video of a lady, a third of her heart was black after a heart attack, she came back a year later after the same IV, all regenerated. Wow. And her ejection fraction went from under 35% back up over 55, awesome. which is normal. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. That'll probably be our biggest push going forward is just heart health because it's we get the results. Like nobody wants to go in for another MRI. You do your knee, you feel good. You don't want to go sit in that tube. It's tough to get the data. Nobody cares about doing like the right. heart scans. It's super simple. So go with this. These went to your heart, and they help. The thing is, and it's I guess back to cholesterol. LDL, bad right. cholesterol, isn't as bad as you think. The problem with it is that the inside of your arteries and veins start to get too smooth. I think sugar's a big culprit. It's of like course. sandpaper, of course. Yeah. and you're smoothing yeah. it down. It's the AGEs. It's mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. the glycated end, product, uh, end products for sure. But look, I always say this, and again, we don't talk about this enough, but the heart is the coherence capacitor. And everything is the heart. If you have a strong, functional heart, and this even goes back, you know, we get into woo-woo with the love. Like when you're a person that's giving and receiving love, you have a strong heart. That's why a lot of people who don't exercise but are very loving and giving, they live a long life because their heart is so robust. Makes sense. They've created that heart. But yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, okay, cool, man. Well, Josh, this has been an absolutely profound podcast. Let's definitely introduce uh, the folks that work here at Greenbody. For sure. Let's do that. So um, why don't you move the camera, Dan? Or let's just get him over here. here we're going to yeah. introduce Dr. Romo first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's Dr. Miguel Romo. He probably has more stem cell experience than almost any doctor out there. Um, his brother-in-law actually is a, a gynecologist, did his PhD in cellular biology. He founded a um, lab originally with mesenchymal stem cells here in Mexico, like what, 18 years ago or something? I think so, 18 years ago. Yeah, and Dr. Romo here did 12 years of med school. He also is a gynecologist, and he would work there when he wasn't in school, and then. He, uh, he worked there for what, four or five years after? Uh, four. Yeah, four years after, and then you've been working for us, I think, for what, three years? Here? Yeah. Three years. Three years, so, I mean, that's, that's a lot of years of just doing stem cell therapies experience. He knows everything inside and out, and uh, yeah, so, it's, uh, he's the man. <laughs> he's our head physician here. <laughs> All right, and then we'll introduce uh, Dr. Art here. here yeah and you've been with us now has it been a year now I have a year yeah Long. so he's been here a little over a year and he was working at some of the different uh, the lab also back uh, in Guadalajara before this and I mean how long have you been working with stem cells well I have five years on these treatments yeah so a, a lot of experience how old are you I'm 30 years old he looks 18, but he's <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm giving 16. <laughs> so yeah, our doctors are, are young, but a lot of experience, and you know we've just been kind of going from there. We'll be moving to the new facility for soon, and then uh, let's introduce Dan real quick. So Dan helps me with the calls and everything here, all the way from Blue Ridge, Georgia. Blue Ridge, Georgia. <laughs> Yeah. Dan, you were a patient first, right? That's right. And uh, about four years ago, just kept coming down, and then I've um, been here for a full year now. So you just moved here. Just moved here. Yeah. We. Um, but basically, the website will get you about ninety percent of the way there on questions. But for your hard questions, call in. And a lot of this will just kind of get you down here. So make sure you know you've got your hotel arrangements, your flights, and all that to kind of help you through the process. And we send you an itinerary, so once you're here, it's pretty seamless. You, uh, you know, all your consultations with the doctor, scans, and things like that. So, 
that's that's kind of what we do is just setting you up for the process to get here. But if you have any questions, you can call me anytime. It'll be myself or Josh, most of the answers the phones. Yeah. And then let's uh, let's get the bots in here. <laughs> <laughs> the brains and the beauty of the operation. Yes. <laughs> so this is the real boss. This is my wife Venus. El Jefe, as I said, El Jefe. Could not do business here without her. Doing business in Mexico is a nightmare. Um, so Venus, you're an accountant. Yes, I'm an accountant. Like I handle all the accounting, administration, and logistics of the team. She has German level efficiency, but uh, you know that Mexican flair and. <laughs> And yeah, and I mean, they make you file taxes monthly here, not yearly. It's wow. ridiculous. So yeah. she is always busy, and she still manages to keep everyone in line, growing, building, and it, it's just what we've been doing. It's been fun. Amazing. Yeah. And I will just say, like, they run such a first-class operation here. Um, they have drivers that come from the airport. Uh, they pick this up at the hotel. I mean, like, it, like I said, if you guys fly, for any of you guys that are considering this, and I know a lot of you are going to email me and I'm going to get a ton of questions and stuff, especially in the private groups and stuff like that, but like, I cannot recommend anybody strong enough. I don't do podcasts like this kind of stuff. And by the way, I am not being financially incentivized at all. I do not have any kind of deal. There's no affiliate. This is just me. I mean, Josh and Venus are amazing. This clinic is amazing. You know, Monica's sitting over in the other room. Uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a really good spot right now. So it's like, you know, if you guys are interested in coming down here again, their website is dreambody.clinic. Go there. There'll be so much more information below at the bottom of this video. I'll, I'll give you guys a final say. Like, what are your final thoughts? Just said we're just so happy you're here and got to meet you. And I mean, we got, we talked a lot about things outside of stem cells. I think we think yeah. very similar and <laughs> <For sure. laughs> really, yes. really felt like we connected. And I, I really, Glad you're here. Yeah, yeah man. And, and obviously, I feel, the feeling is mutual, and Monica feels awesome about you guys too. You know, Monica, Monica's a very intuitive, very touchy feely person. She's like, I really like them. So, like, yeah, we're, we really honestly, like her too. Yeah, no, and honestly, we're grateful for, for, for this whole uh, you know uh, connection now, and uh, I see a lot of great things in the future. And you know, just to, to wrap up. Uh, Nick and Josh and I are going to be talking about a lot of different things uh, that he, that Nick will be able to do down here that he can't do in the States, so uh, be on the lookout for all of you guys. So remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.